When we started Yumpling, we focused on two things, good food and good customer service. Everyone makes out to serve good food, so I won't get into that one here. Good customer service, however, is not very high on most food trucks' list of priorities. Food trucks are not really known for being super friendly or understanding to customers, and we wanted to change that perception. We make a conscious effort to be as nice as possible to anyone who comes to our truck, whether they want to order something or they simply have a question about our menu. If an order comes out a bit later than normal, we sincerely apologize. If an order is wrong, we replace it right away and we offer a free meal on their next visit. We try to remember every customer's name, so by their second or third visit, we can greet them by name before they even order anything. We smile. I know it may sound obvious, but think about all the times you went to a food truck or a fast food restaurant and the person at the counter looked like working there was the last thing they wanted to do. Can I get some extra salt? We're all out. Could you check? No. You can read through our Yelp reviews and you'll see people specifically single out our great customer service. These small efforts gradually helped us build a loyal following and it set ourselves apart from all the other food trucks. A lot of the things I'll cover in this chapter may seem common sense to many of you, especially if these are things you already implement or plan to implement on your food truck. But surprisingly, few food truck owners practice them. Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list of everything involved in food truck customer service, but it should give you an idea of the bare minimum your customers should expect from you and your staff. So what to do when a customer first approaches your truck? Smile, make eye contact, and thank them for giving your food truck a try. Some people are just curious about what you sell. You can let them know that you can answer any questions they have and give them some time to look over your menu. Don't just stare at them until they order something or walk away because you're making them feel uncomfortable. I will literally be standing right here if you need anything at all. Okay. You should have a standardized answer for the most common menu questions. For example, if you sell burgers and customers can choose American or cheddar cheese, every employee on your truck should have the same answer for when a customer asks, which one's better? It looks bad if different employees give different answers, or even worse, if the employee just stares blankly at the customer and isn't sure what to say. If a customer starts to order but seems unsure about what to get, take a few seconds and explain what some popular items are to make their decision easier. Oh, I'll have a, uh, no. Oh, maybe, no. Hmm, I'll have, no. Oh, maybe- Are you planning on ordering today, sir? If a new customer orders something very spicy or has a strong flavor, make sure they know and that they can handle it. Be polite and make small talk. Ask how their day is going. If it's a regular customer, thank them for coming back. If you're not sure how to pronounce their name, ask instead of butchering it. This is Kim Shield. Am I saying your name correctly? Jin Shield. Jim Shield. Jin? Jin Shield. Jin Shield. Jin Shield. Yeah, Jin so. Shield. Jin Shield. Yeah, that's okay. perfect. I've asked you to teach me Korean, and in an hour, all I've learned is how to say your name. If you remember the customer's name, always call them by their name. Actually, one of the most effective ways of remembering names is to repeat a person's name as many times as you can during your interaction without making it awkward. You can say it once when you greet them, again when you ask for their order, a third time when you confirm their order, and a fourth time when you give them their food. If a customer orders something that'll take a few minutes, be sure to tell them about the wait time and thank them for their patience. If a customer leaves a tip, either in cash or electronically, specifically thank them for it. It amazes me that so many places these days expect tips simply for doing their job, and they don't even say thank you. That That's bitch good. Tip. That's not bad. Bitch, tip! <laughs> if a customer comes to you to complain that the food is late, you've already kind of dropped the ball. Whoever is on the register that day should be monitoring the order tickets so that he can proactively apologize to customers who have been waiting longer than normal and reassure them that their food will come out soon. Customers are much more likely to be understanding if you seek them out before they seek you out. No matter what, apologize and give an explanation. You should expect the customer to be upset, so try your best not to get defensive. Just apologize profusely and don't forget that it's not the customer's fault that their food is late or made wrong. It's not your fault. What? It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. I know. No, Stewie, Stewie. It's not your fault. Don't do this to me, man. Not you, man. It's not your fault. Screw you. Cut it out, man. It's not your fault. If the customer seems extremely upset, you can consider offering something on the house. 
offering a discount or even comping their whole meal. You may even want to leave the truck to deliver the food to them personally and apologize again. Whether it's a sexually suggestive comment, cursing, smoking near the serving window, or anything else that makes you or your other customers feel uncomfortable, ask them to politely but firmly stop. I will have a chicken breast. Hold the chicken. Oh. <laughs> Is that what you really want? No, I'm gonna have the gourmet hot dog. Never escalate the situation and don't ever get into a physical confrontation. If they already pay for their food, consider refunding them and asking them to leave. If it becomes serious, have someone call the police. Always keep in mind that when a customer is upset, logic rarely ever works to calm them down. A lot of times, if you show them that they're wrong, they'll just get even more upset because now you've embarrassed them. The best way to deal with these situations is to have infinite patience and apologize for everything. Let's say a customer definitely ordered a cheeseburger and you make it properly, but then they say they specifically asked for no cheese. There's no point in arguing. I mean, even if you're right, what will you achieve? Will the customer be any less upset if they realize that you're right? You should, by default, always assume an apologetic position. Just simply say something like, I'm sorry, I thought you said a cheeseburger, I must have input the wrong order. Could you wait a few more minutes while we make it properly? By swallowing your pride and being mature about it, you can avoid getting into a huge argument. Also, if you definitely were right, the other customers online will know and they'll appreciate your response even more. The only exception I would make is if the situation directly involves money. Like if a customer gave you a $20 bill, but insists that he gave you a $50 bill. You can start with an innocent question like, Are you sure? In a non-accusatory way. If it's a small amount of money, like less than five bucks, and there's a long line of customers behind him, I may just let it pass. If it's a situation where they said they gave you a 50 or a 100, most people put large bills underneath the normal till in the cash register, so you can check there and show the customer that there's no large bills. If there are large bills there, you could try matching them up with the orders that came in before by checking with your POS system. Anyway, there are so many variations of how the situation can play out, and I won't go over every one here. You'll have to rely on your experience and try to avoid it turning into a huge thing. Just remember to always assume that the customer is right until you're sure that they're wrong. And even if they're wrong, unless it's a major issue, let it go, let it go. customer service is also responding to people's comments on social media, Yelp, and other online portals. If someone leaves a positive comment or posts a picture of your food, definitely thank them and encourage them to come back. But don't be disheartened if you get the occasional nasty post. Russell Crowe is delightfully paradoxical in that he is a huge <laughs> with a small penis. When it happens, direct message them to see what the problem is and try to resolve it. Some other things that customers appreciate are special events like giveaways, discounts, or even just a personalized thank you to a select few people. If your truck goes out on Halloween, for example, having a bowl of candy for all your customers to enjoy is a nice small touch. If it's a food-related day like National Burger Day or Donut Day, and your truck sells that food, consider giving away a limited number of that food for free. You can also get inspiration from companies or brands that you've had good experiences with in the past. A long time ago, when I was visiting LA, I splurged on a Burberry trench coat. Oh, you think you're fancy? The sales rep was very friendly and very helpful. The sleeves are a bit long for me, so he had them sent to a tailor that afternoon so that I could pick up the coat the next day before I had to return to New York. He said their tailor usually requires two to three days, but he put in a special request so that I wouldn't miss my flight. About a week after I got home, I received a handwritten note from the sales rep saying he hoped I had a good flight back and that I enjoyed my new trench coat. Since I never directly gave him my address, he probably got it from the warranty form I filled out when I was making my purchase. Stalker. Now, some of you may be thinking, of course he would do that. He's trying to earn commission. But I can assure you that that kind of personalized attention is pretty rare, even in the luxury world. Sales rep will suck up to you as much as possible when you're inside the store giving you sparkling water, complimenting your outfit. Oh my God, I love your bracelet. Where did you get it? Oh, my mom made it for me. It's adorable. Oh, it's so fetch. But once they've made the sale, there's no incentive for them to do anything further. The sales rep that I had went above and beyond what he is required to do. And because of that, I'll always have a good image of Burberry, whether or not I agree with their fashion. Your truck may not be the Burberry of the food truck world, but you can certainly offer the same high level of customer service and satisfaction. 